Yes. Uh, do we have a video example of a quantum harmonic oscillator? Like for the classical one, we can imagine some picture. Yeah. For this one, what does it look like? Yeah, I think I mentioned this before. Um, so the reason we spend so much time with oscillators is that um, almost any stable equilibrium can be approximated as a harmonic oscillator. Almost any stable equilibrium. So let me show you what I mean. So uh, let me just uh, draw up an arbitrary potential. I mean truly arbitrary. So some kind of smooth potential energy curve that looks, I don't know. Um, let me just draw one that looks like this. Um, just an arbitrary potential, um, something like this, right? And um, if, uh, so, so this is a potential energy as a function of position. And if a particle were to start out here, then it would just roll down into infinity here. Um, all right, so let's find uh, some stable um, equilibrium, po po positions for e a stable equilibrium. So there are equilibriums. This is an equilibrium point. This is an equilibrium point. This is equilibrium. This is another equilibrium, right? So this is an unstable equilibrium because if a particle is exactly at this position, it will feel zero force, but it moves a little bit either way it'll roll away either way. So this is a stable equilibrium, right? So at stable equilibrium, these are some of the features that you can say. Uh, one of the features you can say is that first derivative of the potential function is zero. Right? That force has to be zero. And uh, second derivative of the potential function has to be positive. Because if it's negative, then it would be unstable equilibrium. So imagine, so taking this potential. So potential as a function of x, it's some complicated function. But what you are going to do is you are going to expand it around x naught. Imagine doing a Taylor polynomial expansion of the function around the x naught. Then what that would look like is, all right, the constant v naught plus the first derivative at x naught times x minus x naught plus the second derivative um, at x naught of one half x minus x naught squared plus and so on. Right, that's the Taylor expansion, right? So this is constant, it doesn't really affect anything. This is zero because of this property we talked about. Right? Here, for this value here, you get a positive number. You can call that positive number k. So this is the very first non-vanishing term. Using that to approximate this potential, you get your approximate value of potential around x naught is, is approximately v naught plus 1 half k x minus x naught squared. Simple harmonic oscillator. So it's a universal. Almost anything that's bound into a stable configuration, you can come up with a form where it's represented like a simple harmonic oscillator. Some of the more common ones would be, um, so would be uh, molecules. So molecules are bound at a distance. If you try to pull them apart, there's a restoring force. If you try to push them close, there's also restoring force. So molecules have a vibrating mode. And the oscillation frequency of the vibrating mode or the energy needed to excite that mode is consistent with what you would predict from harmon simple harmonic quantum mechanical simple harmonic oscillator. And um, as an example of simple harmonic oscillator, the orbital orbiting object in the rotating frame will behave like a simple harmonic oscillator because there's a 
just the right speed and the radius for circular orbit, you displace it a little bit, then it will oscillate around the circular orbit. So, so simple harmonic oscillator is universal. It's like, where can't you find the example? <laughs> um, we use this spring as an illustration of it because it's easy. But almost any stable equilibrium can be represented with a simple harmonic oscillator potential as an approximation. 